But I want, I'm glad Peter is on the show because we, we're at the, Peter's been a friend for years, years and years and years. But the reason this is an important show is because the world changed on August 15th, 1971. So when I look at the world as a, why is it screwed up? Why is there such a gap between the rich and the poor? Why is real estate in a bubble? You can trace much of it back to 50 years ago, August 15th, 1971. And in, in, in January of 1972, I was on an aircraft carrier in the South China Sea when my rich, because I missed the announcement that what Nixon did in seven, August 15th. And it changed my life because I'm on this aircraft carrier as a Marine pilot. And I get this letter from Rich Dad via snail mail <clears throat> saying that, hey, Nixon took the dollar off the gold standard. Well, it took me six months to get that letter. But anyway, uh, with that, I didn't know what it meant. Back in 1971, for those of you who may not know it, it was illegal for Americans to own gold because in 1933, FDR took the dollar off the gold standard. He also caused social security. FDR really screwed this economy up way back then. So I couldn't own gold. We didn't know what gold was. And that really changed my life. So when I look at what is going on in the economy today, I mean, let me ask this question. How in the world can the CEO of a company borrow money just to jack the price of their stocks up? That's criminal. And why is real estate price, why real estate prices so high? So the reason we invited Peter today is because Peter, as Kim says, is one of the most outspoken. He does not give a shit what you think of him. He will tell you. He hates Bitcoin. <laughs> he, he will not stop. So I'm going to back off right now because Peter is the CEO of Euro Pacific Capital and Gold. And I, I, I invest with Peter for full disclosure because some of his guys on his, on his team at Euro Pacific Capital and shift gold and all the companies he has they are professionals in the world of gold which president nixon took off the gold standard 50 years ago so it's a very important show and if you want to know why the rich are getting richer the poor middle class are getting poor our money is fake that's what's wrong and anybody saving dollars is a loser right now and because they keep printing it so with that, Peter, give us your opinion of August 15th, 1971. What happened on that day? So on August 15th, 1971, that is when Nixon closed the gold window. Of course, when he closed it, he said it was just temporary, but it's been 50 years and it hasn't reopened. But what you spoke about uh, FDR in 1933 is true because that's the year when the government made it illegal for Americans to own monetary gold. So American citizens could not take their Federal Reserve notes back to the Federal Reserve and get real dollars, which were made of gold. All they could do was negotiate, you know, circulate uh, the Federal Reserve notes. But if you were not American, if you lived outside the United States, you were still able to take your Federal Reserve notes to the Federal Reserve and actually get paid the gold that the notes promised to pay. And so that continued up until 1971. And basically what was happening in the late 1960s, early 1970s, was we started to run very big deficits in the 1960s to pay for the war in Vietnam, to pay to go to the moon, to pay for the war on poverty and all sorts of uh, government programs, they called it guns and butter, and we had both, yet we didn't pay for either. And so we ran these big deficits, and the Federal Reserve was then monetizing the deficits. Now we call it QE. Uh, they hadn't you know, thought of that word back then, but that's what they were doing. So the Fed was doing QE to monetize uh, all this government spending. We didn't have the gold, and our foreign creditors were suspicious that we didn't have enough gold to meet our obligations. So they started to uh, show up at the gold window with their Federal Reserve notes asking for the gold. Well, we didn't have enough. And so we ended up defaulting on our obligations because really Federal Reserve notes were promises to pay gold. And we defaulted on that promise. And so anybody who says the U.S. government has never defaulted on an obligation, that's not true. That was a massive default in 1971. And, uh, you know, we've been on this 
fiat-based monetary system ever since. And I think this system is now on the verge of an implosion. Uh, and I think we're going to see this, you know, relatively soon where the dollar now collapses and the world returns to the gold standard just without the dollar. Because when the world was on a dollar standard after Bretton Woods, it was because the dollar was not only backed by gold, but redeemable on demand into gold. Uh, and after we defaulted, the dollar you know, lost a lot of value in the 1970s, about two thirds of its value relative to the Deutsche Mark, the yen, the Swiss franc, but it continued to serve as the reserve and it's a reserve currency to this day. I think that status is what's in jeopardy. Um, how old were you when that, were you, were you even born yet? Yes, I, I was born in 1963, so I, I, I was eight. <laughs> So did, I don't think you were watching Bonanza, were you, when when Nixon made the announcement? No, I think I I think I saw Bonanza in reruns. Okay, so this is my question then. Um, this is a commercial plug for Peter Schiff because, and full disclosure, I do invest with him because your guys are very knowledgeable on gold. So what does Peter? What does Schiff Gold do? What What do you guys do? I mean, and if you're only a kid, why are you so adamant about gold? I mean, something got into you. Well, gold is real money. And, you know, my father taught me about gold a long time ago. In fact, before we went off the gold standard, my father was one of the few people who actually testified in front of the Senate Committee on Money and Banking against going off the gold standard. And my father was the only one that said that if we went off the gold standard, the price of gold would go up and that the value of the dollar would go down and that we'd have lots of inflation. All of the other government witnesses, including the then Secretary of the Treasury and the, and the then head of the Federal Reserve, they all said that if we went off the gold standard, the price of gold, which was about $35 an ounce at the time, they said the price of gold would fall. They thought the dollar was supporting gold instead of the other way around. So they were talking about how great the economy was going to be if we can only remove the shackles of the gold standard. And my father was the only one who testified and got it right because he laid out exactly what was going to happen in the 1970s. And it happened exactly the way he said and it, the exact opposite of what the Secretary of the Treasury and the Federal Reserve said. And you know what? The Secretary of the Treasury and the Federal Reserve uh, uh, head are just as incompetent now, maybe even more so than they <laughs> were back then. Uh, they have no idea uh, the, the damage that they have unleashed. Uh, from their policies, especially the mistakes that they've made since COVID. I mean, the, the Federal Reserve has done everything wrong uh, since COVID. And despite the fact that everybody is praising them for what they did, remember, everybody praised them for all the bailouts and all the stimulus following 2008. And they praised them when they bailed everything out after the dot-com bubble popped. But all those were policy mistakes. What the Federal Reserve should have done following the outbreak of COVID was withdraw money from circulation, allow interest rates to go up because the problem uh, with COVID, and I said this at the time, was a supply problem. People were leaving their jobs. Companies were shutting down. People were staying home. They weren't working. They weren't producing goods. They weren't providing services. So we had a lot less stuff to buy. What the Federal Reserve needed to do was reduce the money supply so that money supply went down with good supply. Instead, they did the opposite. They flooded the economy with money. They printed all this money and sent it out to everybody. So what happened? We increased demand while we were decreasing supply. That's why you're seeing this huge increase in consumer prices right now 